Hi, my name is Peter Wilder. I am an HVAC application engineer at ABB. The following is another installment in the series VFT troubleshooting using an oscilloscope. In this presentation, we're going to look at the output voltage and current waveforms on a VFD. The objective of this presentation is to allow you to gain a basic understanding of what the output of a variable frequency drive or VFD voltage and current waveforms look like when analyzed with an oscilloscope. What I hope to show you is how to use a scope to take measurements of these signals, such as your voltage AC or your current AC, and also measurements, for example, on the voltage waveform, such as your rise time or your peak voltage. Before I dive in and discuss how to hook up a scope to the output of a VFD, and we discuss how to take measurements, I just want to remind everyone, arc flash safety is very important. Follow all lockout takeout procedures when making connections between a scope or meter and the VFD. And it's best to wait five minutes once power is removed before making any of these connections to the drive. We're first gonna discuss what the output voltage waveform looks like on a oscilloscope. So what we need to do is first hook up some voltage probes to the output of a VFD, the output terminals, T1, T2, and T3. What's important to note is we need to use a differential voltage probe. It can be an active or passive probe, doesn't matter. And we need to hook up the voltage probe between any two of the terminals. It could be any combination of the three, T1 to T2, T2 to T3, or T1 to T3. What's important to note though is that we do not hook up between T1 or T2 and T3 and ground. We're not referencing this voltage ground, we're referencing it phase to phase. Now in the picture on the right, I'm showing the scope hooked up to the terminals near the VFD. Now, for example, if you're concerned about, let's say, peak voltage or rise time potentially damaging a motor and you're trying to troubleshoot a motor issue, it may actually be best to hook up the scope as close to the motor as possible. That's actually the recommended solution there. And in that scenario, you may actually have to open up the motor conduit box. So this picture on the right here would actually be shown making the connections at the motor, not at the drive. All right, now that we have the voltage probe connected to two of the output phases of uh, the variable frequency drive, it's time to make sure that we set up the input channel on the scope for the voltage probe. And in the video on the right here, I'm showing in this on this scope how to do that. You select channel A, voltage, and it's important to make sure we select the correct ratio of our probe. I have a 10 to one passive probe I'm using, so I make sure I select the 10 to one ratio. All right, now that we have input channel A set up for a voltage probe, and the correct ratio of 10 to one in my example, we now need to make sure we set up the bandwidth for input channel A correctly. Otherwise, you could be filtering out part of the signal that we're trying to measure. As you can see in the image on the right, the scope image, you can see that the corners are rounded off at the top and bottom down there. Now this is because the bandwidth on channel A is set to only 20 kilohertz in my example. We wanna make sure we set the bandwidth to full on our scope or the max rating that you can so that we can see the full signal and not accidentally filter out any of the signal we're trying to measure. All right, now that we have the scope fully set up on channel A to see the output voltage waveform, what can we measure? Well, we'll first look at the output voltage waveform in a zoomed out state, which you can see in the image on the right, I'm at 10 milliseconds per division time base. Now in this base, there's not gonna be a lot of detailed analysis most likely that will be done using a scope looking at the output voltage waveform, but there are a couple cool things that may be interesting just to note and see. What we're gonna do here is we're going to look, uh, pause the signal, and I'm gonna use the cursors or, uh, vertical cursors to measure one period of the waveform. And you can see here how you can see the sinusoidal like waveform. I'm gonna measure one period of it. And I right now have the drive running the motor at 30 Hertz. So if I look at the frequency now, I'm at 29.76 or AK 30 Hertz. Now I'm gonna do is change the motor uh, speed to 40 Hertz. I'm gonna just on uh, hold release. The motor's now accelerated up to 40. And now you can see the period has changed. And as I readjust the cursors, you can now see I'm at 39 or 40 Hertz is my output frequency. So this is one nifty little thing you can't see on a scope when you're looking at the output voltage waveform as you can see the frequency the drive is running the motor at. Now, besides looking at the output frequency that the drive is running the motor at in a zoomed out state, we can also have the scope tell us what is the equivalent voltage AC signal of this voltage that's going to the motor. Now, what we gotta remember is that the VFD is using PWM or pulse width modulation to recreate the voltage. And that's what we're seeing here on the screen. When we select channel A here to look at the voltage, ideally, we don't wanna just use voltage AC. We wanna use, if your scope has it, a setting of voltage PWM, as this will give us a more accurate answer to what is the equivalent AC voltage of the signal. As you can see here, I select voltage PWM in the video on the right. 
And you can see I have 162 volts. Right now my volts per division is 500 uh, volts per division. Now, if I increase the resolution of this uh, signal, so I maximize it on the screen, you can see my number drops to around 157, 58 volts. This number will more accurately represent the equivalent voltage that the drive is most likely displaying on the control panel. All right, now let's zoom in on an individual transistor pulse in our output voltage waveforms. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna decrease the time base. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start seeing individual transistors turning on and off. That's what all those lines are. And I'm gonna go down to around four to uh, 10 microseconds. Now I'm gonna do a couple things here. First, I'm gonna set up a trigger on edge. I'm gonna set up on rising edge in this case, because I'm looking at the top half or the positive part of the recreated AC sine wave. I'm also going to increase the resolution of the volts per division, and I'm gonna move the signal down so I can get it fully on the screen. And then I'm gonna adjust using the up-down arrow keys, the trigger level, so I can lock in on an individual transistor train on. And as you can see, I have that right here, and you can see that it goes up and there's actually a little bit of resonance after the transistor turns on and holds on. Now that we know how to use the trigger function on scope, to lock in on an individual rising edge of a uh, transistor turning on, what can we do with this? Well, let's say you have some motor failures in the field. You're being told by the motor rewind or ESA shop that uh, the motor failures are due to phase to phase or phase to uh, ground shorts uh, due to high voltage spikes in the motor. We may want to understand what is our peak voltage at the uh, motor. So to do this, we would lock onto an IGBT transistor pulse like we did in the previous slide. And then what we'll do is just use a basic cursor function, which I'm showing you on the right here, to measure the peak voltage. Now in this example, I have 936 volts, which is well below the requirements of MG1 part 31, which are around 1400 volts that a motor installation has to withstand. So in this example, this would not be damaging voltage at the motor. But if you were to have a high voltage spike, you may need to look at an output DVDT or line reactor to help uh, lower the peak voltage um, at the motor. It'd also be important to note that the best place to take peak voltage measurements is not the drive where I previously showed making connections for your differential probe. It would be at the motor conduit box is the best place to measure peak voltage when having concerns about motor failure. Now, besides looking at the peak voltage when we zoom in on the individual IGBT uh, transistor pulse turning on, we can also measure the rise time or how long does it take for the transistor to turn on. Now, before I show that on a oscilloscope in the next slide, I wanna first cover what is the standard to measure rise time as this is not quite obvious. And the image on the right is from the MG1 part 31 standard for motors. And it details exactly how to measure the rise time of an IGBT for a VFD uh, running a motor. Now you can see here that the rise time is between these two points, which is not the same as the peak voltage. It's actually measuring the time between 10 to 90% of the steady state voltage. The steady state voltage is actually the DC bus voltage on the VFD. So we can now show you in the next slide how to actually take this measurement. In the video on the right here, I've locked on to an individual transistor pulse at 400 nanoseconds as a time base and 200 volts per division. The more you can zoom in on an individual transistor pulse, uh, get the time base smaller, and reduce your volts per division and have the signal still be on the screen, the better and more accurate your uh, result will be in calculating the rise time of the IGBT. Now there are two methods to, I'm gonna show you here, uh, how to calculate the rise time. The first method is I'm gonna show you how to use the cursors, the vertical cursors on the scope. And this method is your, a, a simple method. It's kind of crude though. It's not gonna give you the most accurate result. What I'm attempting to do here is adjust the cursors so they're at 10% from above zero volts and 10% below or 90% off of zero um, from the steady state voltage. The voltage in the upper right corner, that 540, is actually just a differential voltage between the two cursors. So it could be used if you do some side hand math on how to calculate or move those, adjust those cursors, but this is very tedious. So what I'm kind of just here doing is giving an estimate of what 90 and 10% is and I have about 0.352 microseconds is what my guess is of the rise time using the cursor method. Now, if your scope has a function for measuring rise time, which the scope does, this is gonna give you a much more accurate result as it's gonna adjust the 10 and 90% cursors automatically. The only thing you need to do is make sure you adjust 
the uh, line so you're measuring the steady state voltage correctly. As you can see here, the steady, the top end voltage, it said was up above 700 volts. I know my DC bus voltage is 672 volts. So what I did is here, I moved that vertical line down to be 672 volts and that automatically adjusted those cursors. So now you can see my rise time is at 0.37 microseconds which actually does match up very closely to the cursor method I previously showed, but this is just a more confident answer that your results are correct by using this method. Now, the good news is MG1 part 31 states that the minimum rise time of an IGBT shall be 0.1 microseconds. And in this case, I'm much greater than 0.1 microseconds. I'm at 0.37 microseconds. So this is showing a good result that I'm not gonna be damaging the motor with this VFD. And I'd like to transition and discuss what the current waveform looks like between the drive and the motor on an oscilloscope. Before we look at it, we have to connect a current clamp around one of the motor wires. We want to make sure we do not also include the ground wire. We only want to put the current clamp around one of the wires. We will not be discussing uh, how to set up the scope to look at output power between the drive and the motor. But if you were to attempt to look at uh, measure output power with your scope meter, you will want to make sure that the direction on the arrow on the current clamp is facing the direction uh, that the wires are going towards the motor, have the arrow facing the motor. Now that we have the current clamp around one of the drive output wires to the motor, we need to set up the scope input channel so that it can read the current waveform correctly. Now the current clamp I'm using it can be set up so it can read a max of either 40 amps or 200 amps via adjustable dip switch on it. Now on the adjustable dip switch, it refers to two different millivolts per amp ratios. We need to make sure that we set the scope up correctly so that the input channel's millivolts per amp ratio is equal or the same as what the dip switch setting is on the current clamp itself. And that can be seen here in the video on the right. Now, the image on the right, you can see the current waveform between the drive and the motor. And as you see, it's sinusoidal. It doesn't look like the voltage waveform, which was a PWM or a bunch of square pulses. So now the benefit of this signal being sinusoidal is if you were to take a current measurement on the, using the scope, you can just select AC current. You don't have to select some special uh, setting of like AC PWM that doesn't exist. It's just AC current. And you can see here, I'm measuring the current of around 13.7 amps, which most likely will very closely match what the drive is reading on its uh, control panel screen. Now, when looking at the output current waveform between the drive and the motor, the main thing you'll be looking for is distortion in the current waveform. What I mean by that is the waveform doesn't look sinusoidal. It doesn't have a nice smooth rounded top and bottom to the wave. It may have, for example, jagged points in the waveform, which is what I'm showing an image on the right. Now the image on the right is from the output current waveform from a non-ABB drive, and it's actually a drive that uses thin film capacitors. ABB drives use electrolytic capacitors, so this is not the type of waveform you'd have between the drive and the motor and the image on the right which is good. Now, when you have these sharp jagged points in your output current waveform, that's mean distortion is occurring. And when you have distortion in your current waveform, that can mean extra heating in the motor can be occurring. And obviously any extra heat in a motor is bad for a motor. Ideally, you never wanna have your output current waveform have sharp jagged points in the image on the right, so your motor runs as cool as possible. All right, let's summarize what we've learned today in this brief presentation on how to use an oscilloscope on the output side of a VFD to look at the output voltage and current waveforms. First, before we make any connection to the drive, you always want to remember that you follow your lockout takeout procedures and wear proper PPE. Now, when looking at the output voltage waveform, we want to make sure we set up our oscilloscope to be at the maximum bandwidth so we don't have any rounding off of the corners on the PWM waveform. Also, when we want to look at the output voltage uh, value as a VAC value, we want to hopefully use a setting on the scope that allows it to read pulse width modulation or PWM. Also, when looking at the rise time of your IGBT, hopefully your scope has a function that will allow the, that calculation to be done more easily as the factoring in your 10% off the bottom and your 90% off the top can be tricky if you just have to use your cursors. Now, when looking at the current waveform, obviously we wanna make sure we set uh, our current clamp up correctly. Remember, sometimes current clamps can have multiple settings via a dip switch. We wanna make sure the scope is set up with that correct ratio setting. Uh, ideally, your current waveform will be nice and sinusoidal, nice and smooth. If you do see spikes or, or sharp edges at the top or bottom of your waveform, that could mean the current to the motor um, is producing extra heating in the motor, and that can be detrimental to the motor. So you ideally always want to see a nice smooth waveform in, on your sine wave. This concludes looking at the output voltage and current waveforms on a oscilloscope from a variable frequency drive. 
If you have any further questions, please reach out to your local ABB representative for assistance.